check this clip out because Money Man is telling you why your music ain't doing what it's supposed to do. You see a lot of artists falling off because they make trendy music. So when the trend is out or your dance is out, you're gone. You get what I'm saying? Absolutely. But if you make you music, you talking about your feelings or you talking about how you are, your music can be timeless. Mm -hmm. Like, like, um, you got future. He's been on for what seven to 10 years because he doesn't make trendy. Just his subject matter ain't just the trend of what's right. going on at this moment right now. So a lot of people make songs like an Instagram post. Like, you know, Instagram post, once you see it, it's over with. Right. So you got to content is a big thing. You got a lot of people getting on, but they also falling off every day. I agree. Mm. But it, it it also gives people the opportunity to make some money. It's just what you do with your money after that. Damn, niggas fall Wait. off. Niggas fall off every day, B. Hey, <laughs> people are making music like Instagram posts. Yeah, that was a bar. I can't hey, even lie. That was a bar. Yeah. Once that thing is gone, it's gone. You forgot what the first thing you saw in your scroll session this time around. That's tough. Yeah. But look, like I said, we just talked about this. The importance of putting you in the music, but so many artists don't even know who they are enough to put them into the music. But look, this is an artist. If y'all don't know who Money Man is, he has six million plus monthly listeners right now. He's independent to my knowledge. He, he's not Even if he is now, he signed a deal after he started popping. Because when he started popping, he had more than six million monthly listeners at some point. But uh, you know, he's probably in between projects or something like that. And he was independent. So he knows some things. And when we talk about putting yourself in your music, I like the way he just straight up said, like, share your feelings. Yeah. Right. Your thoughts, your experiences. Because one of the most important things that I've been saying for years now, when it comes to being an artist that people can find value in is your point of view. Yeah. Period. If you have a way of going about things, Right. If you have a perspective that people find valuable, then they're going to come back for it because they want to hear what you have to say about it. There could be some news that comes out. Right. And even if they go hear somebody else talk about it, they'll want to hear what you got to say. Right. Yeah. Like there might be some news that comes out about music. Right. And then y'all might be like, man, I wonder what Sean and Jacory have to say about it because we're just putting out our perspective. Right. Even though you heard other people talk about it and when you can get to that point with your music, no matter what happens and what the trends are, which is his standpoint about trendy, people are going to know what you want to know what you have to say. You know, who's an artist that's like that. Little yachty. You always going <laughs> you always going to throw your boy out there, man. You, you put him in some precarious positions, bro. <laughs> Jay Z. Oh yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. Jay Z, yeah. and he's the only one I not the only one I could clearly say that, but I want to say he's one of the ones I want to use because there's some people who are on that path, but they're early on. Yeah, this guy's been around for a minute, obviously, and you know when he says something, he puts out a single track. It circulates. It might not be a hit, but people want to know what he has to say. Yeah. Period. Yeah. And that's what you want to be thinking about. Like, if people can value what I say, then not only are they going to be more likely to continue to listen to your music in the future, but they're going to be more likely to care about what you have to say in the category of style, right? Gaming, whatever is your particular uh cross branding activities right yeah, they're going to care yeah. a lot more about that stuff because they go, they're going to know it's not just a brand flip and you're, you're just being in there they're going to know it has something to do with how you approach things and they already fell in love with how you approach things yeah i think that's what made the trendy stuff such a like double s or like on one hand it can be a great catalyst mm -hmm. right like i think about i think about when drill music became trendy on tiktok mm -hmm. right Think about all of the drill artists that that becoming trendy. Um, well, think about all the artists that were exposed to a larger audience because that type of music became trendy. But then to your point, I think about all the artists that made drill music because it was trendy that, you know, once it stopped becoming trendy, people started kind of listening. Like, I, don't, I don't believe you, man. This don't really feel like you. You know what I'm saying? Like, this don't really feel like the you that you present and everything else. So right. I don't know, man. Sometimes I think. The trendy stuff allows artists to kind of have fun, but I guess it's a different caliber of artist, right? Like an artist that has their sound, yep. knows themselves, 
Um, you know what I'm saying? It's like it's like the Drake effect, bro. Like how many times we've seen Drake just go hop on some shit because it's trendy? It ain't exactly. it ain't ruined them yet. That's exactly who I thought. Yeah, of. But, yeah, yeah. But it ain't it ain't ruined them yet. It's like as fans, we're like, oh, he's just having fun in this other genre, but he doesn't make it his thing. You know what I'm saying? Why? See, why is that? Right? Because he knows who he is, and yeah. we know who he is. Yeah, facts. Right. Yeah. So you know that he's being beside himself he's yeah. not inside himself in that moment so you can recognize what's happening that's the difference between the master and the novice where the painting can look exactly the same but this master has already laid the groundwork and showed you hey i can execute at the highest level yeah. so now i can throw some shit up there and convince people that it's worth a lot and it's and it's this high art yeah. but you yeah. eh, you know what i mean I don't know. What, what am I what am I basing it off of at just being somebody who just started, right? Yeah. Like that's the difference of those things. So let me take a quick second to say if you're an artist trying to blow your music up, or if you're a manager, a music professional in general trying to help an artist blow their music up, I have something that's a game changer for you and it's completely free. As you may know, we've helped multiple artists go from zero to hundreds of thousands of streams. We've helped multiple artists go from hundreds of thousands to millions of streams, chart on Billboard, go viral, all of that stuff. And we've now made the way we've branded multiple artists and helped them go viral completely free, step by step in Brandman Network. All you have to do is check out brandmannetwork.com. You apply. It's completely free. But the thing is, we're not going to let everybody in forever. So the faster you apply, the better your chance of getting accepted. Brandmannetwork.com. Check it out. Back to the video. My point of view is, is so valuable. And uh, I think that Drake example kind of continues to clarify the idea. Because I know a lot of people are going to immediately hear the first part of what we just said and then be like, yeah, see, you need to avoid trends. Trends are bad. No, you can definitely leverage trends yeah. to bring in new audiences. And as a matter of fact, if you think about how Drake used them, it's almost like the funnel effect. Hopping on a trend can help you get more views and expose you to newer audiences and let them hear different sides of you. But then you're still leading people back to you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, how sometimes somebody might, not connect with you in one way or another, but then one day you might see an interview or something. You're like, oh man, he kind of funny. I kind of fuck with him. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or it might just be something, or they might do something that you think is noble. You're like, oh man, no way that is a, a good person. So it's exposing yourself to people in different ways to where eventually they find their way in to the rest of the groove. Cause sometimes, you know, the, the first version of you or the most, mm, or the default version of you, makes people think they don't like you yeah you know what yeah. i mean <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and they don't have a full reason for not liking you and i'm not we're not talking about full-blown hater but like just you know like, i'm not the wrong way yeah rub yeah. you the wrong way yeah. you know what i mean i know gary v talked about that a lot for him right because his approach he's like yeah i know i might come off to a lot of people as if i'm like a scammer uh, a charlatan one of these people who just you know flipping his presence and a regular business coach but you hear him talk enough all right, and eventually you see he doing some real business. Yeah. It slowly starts to mold how you view him a little different if that first approach doesn't fit you. And then he also knows the cursing that he does apparently when he goes into some of these spaces. You know, we're not really in those spaces where people are like, "Oh my gosh, you're cursing" or whatever. But I've I've been in those when I was like back in college before. You know, so man, now we are with YouTube. Ah, <sighs> damn, you're right. You're right. <laughs> YouTube done put us in the corporate environment. <laughs> we done fought it, and now YouTube don't want us to curse like that. Uh, which reminds me, yeah, we gotta, we might have to start like looking at the clock and make sure we don't curse in the first eight minutes of the video. No, for real, no, can't man. play a clip that curses in the first eight minutes of the video just so you don't demonetize the whole thing. That's that's crazy. It is you crazy, I mean? bro. I feel personally uh, stifled. You know what I'm saying? <sighs> like they made it for me. I know they didn't, but you know, hey, impressed. <laughs> I mean, look, I don't know. They might have been watching, man. Like we got to start it. We got to start that motherfucker. That, that happened a few episodes okay, after. 13 minutes in. You know oh, what yeah. I'm yeah. <laughs> that happened a few episodes after we had a whole combo. No, for real. It did. Not cursing. Yeah. Try not to curse on the podcast. Yeah, it did, man. Like, I was like, you know what? You guys are right. <laughs> Demonetize. Hey. <laughs> Hey, that's tough. But we appreciate the views, though, YouTube. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate the views. Look, well, again, this authenticity thing is, is such a. A deep conversation. Shout out to uh, Tuco. He actually 
uh, we had a conversation last night and he checks out the podcast and he, we were talking literally about that authenticity conversation and he had a lot of thoughts. So I want to, I feel like that's a conversation that we can bring up with a lot of people who come up on the pod. Um, because in one way or another, everybody's had to go through that journey of trying to find themselves specifically in music when you're trying to express yourself and make that connection. Um, and it's not an easy thing to do. I like I, one thing I told him, I was like, everybody actually, to be fair, everybody actually finds it difficult to just show themselves and be themselves. Mm-hmm. Right. The problem is artists are trying to monetize it. Right. Because people in corporate jobs, they don't want you to be yourself anyway. Nobody cares. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> actually, if you be yourself, you might be up out of here. So artists are the ones who feel that struggle and it actually impacts them in a way that it doesn't impact most people. <laughs> <laughs> and then to your point is like, what if yourself is something that people don't like? Yeah, that that's a whole nother thing. You know what I mean? I met some artists like that. Like, hey man, this is cool, but something about you just Sucks. Just don't see it exactly. Just don't sit right with my soul, man. Like, hey, man, you, you <laughs> suck, man. <laughs> hey, but that stuff is always uh more offensive to me than like like curse words and like blatant, um, like uh, malicious talk. Well, like when somebody tell you they don't like you, like as a person. When someone says something like that, <laughs> no, not like even don't no, like you. It's just like saying something like you don't suck. I mean, uh, you suck. Okay, yeah, or whatever. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, I don't know, man. Like, okay, I remember the way I noticed this in 10th grade, bro. This is a dude in my class named Russell. That dude was funny. Uh, he was always like, he had like this mean stick or whatever, like angry stick. And I always find angry people much funny, bro. That's <laughs> one of my favorite comedians. And <laughs> the teacher, she was like, you're such a jerk. And for some reason, that shit hit, bro. Like she said, he was a jerk, and she meant it. And it and it could have been bitch, nigga. <laughs> like it could have been anything. But the fact she said jerk, it just felt like, dang, man, she really meant that shit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Like those kind of words always hit me harder for some reason. When I know somebody's trying to be offensive, that shit never offends me. It's like, oh, cool. I just know where you are. But when people feel like they're being genuine. <laughs> <laughs> just like they had to think about it, find alternate words to describe yeah. it. <laughs> like I truly try to express. <laughs> that shit just is different, you know what I mean? But but yeah, man, you know, look, yeah, like you said, sometimes you your personality might not hit, but it's too many people in the world where you can't find anybody. We are we are out of that era. Um, now, with that being said, we got to make a quick transition to 